Welcome to Mic Up or Shut Up! Thanks for joining us today for our season finale, episode 21. Now let's meet our panelist. She loves reading. Hello Kitty, but is scared of her own shadow. Say hello, Angie! Hi! He loves dinosaurs, being right, and movies no one has ever heard of. Say hello, Chris! Woot! <laughs> He loves video games, stupid comedies, and titties. Say hello, Bodie. Big dog, big dog. And I'm Reagan. I love sleep, sarcasm, and more sleep. Now, we'd like to have a shout out to our tech guy. He loves bartending, correcting people, and is always ready to eat. His name is Reese. So today is our season finale. And we are very excited to be bringing this show to you. We have several topics to choose from, so let's start with our first panelist, Chris. What topic will you choose? Uh, I think we're going to talk about uh, Angel Tree Scam. <clears throat> for uh, $200. For $200, yeah. For $200. <laughs> what is Angel Tree Scam? Also, I just want to point out to all our listeners, uh, you voted for that. I told you not to. So. Whatever, but hey, we're listener friendly, so that's what you wanted, so that's what you got. I thought it was great. Thank you, Alex. I did, yeah. I did think it was great. It was funny. I was laughing the whole time, but it was great. <laughs> All right, so uh, recently found out that if anybody who doesn't know, the angel tree is whenever a kid is, you know, the family's too poor to buy them Christmas presents, they can, uh, <clears throat> you'll see these trees like that, like Cracker Barrel or Walmart, Walmart places like that. Thank you. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll write the kid's name and then they'll have the list of Christmas presents they would like to get and then a the person could... Like their age and everything. Yeah, yeah, it tells you a little bit about them and what they want and then you could, you know, take the name and then buy them the Christmas, however many Christmas presents you want, all of them, some of them, and then you, they get them, they get the Christmas presents they wanted. Right, so you may get a card that says, 10-year-old girl yeah. likes Barbie dolls. Right, yeah, right. So, you know, it's a charity thing, so people help out. Well, we recently we found out that uh, the parents... Family members of these kids are uh, taking some of the presents that have been given to them for Christmas and then bringing them back to Walmart when they're trying to get money for them instead of actually letting the kid have a present. The parents are taking the money, returning the presents. They're get, getting a gift yeah. card. Right. And, and buying crack. Yeah, right, buying crack, yeah. Love it. Yep. People are wonderful. People are, people are good people. People are awesome. Yeah, people, people are, are awesome. People. I love them. Right, honey? <laughs> well, this is why I <clears throat> love people. Heard. Although this kind of thing apparently goes on all the time. Angie and I were in Walmart one time returning something ourselves, not from an angel tree, but uh, <laughs> we got we were behind this woman. She had a shopping cart full of pencil colors and notebooks and erasers and pencils, all kinds uh, of stuff. Wipes. Yeah, tons like of stuff. towels, everything. Tons I mean, of stuff. Ridiculous amount of stuff. So we, you know, my wife uh, never sees a stranger, so they start talking. And uh, the woman finally admits to us that uh, she's a teacher, and these are all the excess school supplies she tricked the parents into buying so that she could bring back and get money. She does it every year. Wow. It's a way for her to get extra money. It was the beginning of the summer. Yeah, she literally said all of that. I yeah. knew it. I yeah. knew that was happening. When you see that your kid got to bring five boxes of Kleenex on their school supply list, and there's 30 kids in the class, you think they're actually going to use... 150 boxes of Kleenex? No, because do you know that some parents have asked, like this is obviously locally, parents have asked schools, why do I have to send so much for one child? And right. they say to cover for the children who can't afford to bring their supplies. That's or true. to cover for the teacher who wants to go who bring to Walmart yep. and collect some cash. Yep. That's why a lot of my friends now write their kids' <clears throat> names on everything that they bring. They write it either on the barcode or they write it or you know they write it on the actual item. That way, if they get it, because they, they and they ask the teacher, I would like this back at the end of the year. Well, I can tell you, we had um, when my kids were in elementary school on the supply list printer paper. <laughs> That's back when. Remember when you sniffed the the paper because it smelled yeah. of that ink. Ooh, oh yeah. You were buying printer paper for them to make like copies of tests and oh, stuff like that. Oh. I refused. I never ever bought that because I went, fuck you, they go to public school, that shit is supposed to be paid for. Yep. Correct. I understand markers and notebooks, you know, stuff like that your child's going to use daily, but you're supposed to provide the test and the testing materials. Correct. Well, 
once again, I've said it before, I'm going to say it now, and I will say it again. Homeschool. And then all these problems are solved. Homeschool is the answer. So, that's the end of the discussion, I think. Yeah, that's the, that's the answer, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, it is the answer. That way you don't have some sorry-ass teachers tricking you into giving her extra cash. That's a lot of work for yourself, though. <laughs> I mean, if well, somebody gave me a shopping cart full of supplies to bring back to Walmart and turn in, I'd do it. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> if I got to keep all the cash. Paper towels, though? You could... Everyone can use paper it, towels. Literally, there was boxes and boxes of wipes. There oh, yeah. It was towels. a ton of stuff. It, it was, was colors, crayons, It was, had to be hundreds I mean, of dollars worth of stuff. It was ridiculous, the amount of stuff. And he's right. I don't mean to shout I wish I, I wish I could remember <laughs> so that. Ridiculous. I wish I knew that woman's name because I would shout it out right now on the podcast. And if we had her picture, we'd certainly You're put right. it on Facebook. You're right. Well, I wasn't doing a podcast when I met her. She's lucky. Lucky, lucky trash. Yeah. Yeah, that's filthy. Mm. I mean, I know, but I, I was buying for six kids at one point, and that shit was expensive. Yeah. But I didn't get away with not being able to buy school supplies. I still had to buy it. Yeah. There's some there's some people that say they will only accept, like, do, I, do you know what I'm saying when I say Ticonderoga pencils? The num- the yellow pencils with the oh, green, right. the number two pencils right. that are number one in the I there's I have cousins who are teachers that say that some of their teachers that they worked with only accept Ticonderoga pencils because the other ones break. They don't let them have the cheapo pencils, like the cute ones and things like that. Yeah. One year we had to buy specific, like, Sharpie dry erase markers. Sharpie mm-hmm. brand dry erase markers. Mm-hmm. That shit is not cheap. No, not at all. Hey, mm-hmm. uh, that school was uh, only the best. Only the best for their students. Okay? That's right. That's right. Yeah, well, thank best. God we only have one year left. Last year. And now it's only and half a year. Woo! I seems like you don't even have that long left. Uh, it would be, if you follow my advice in homeschool, it would be no, no years left. <laughs> Yeah, I can't get my child to do her fucking homework. You think I could make her do actual homeschool work? No. Let her be other people's problem. That sounds like a parenting problem. 7.30 to 2.30. It's a parenting problem. I like it. I like it. 7.30 to 2.30? That's what time she goes to school. Oh. Why did you get to go an hour less than I had to go? (laughs) Uh, You went from 8 to 3. 8 to 3. Excuse me. Math Math is hard. (laughs) That's hard. That's wow, hard. y'all go That's a hard. whole year your senior year? I mean, a whole day? No, senior year I had after Well, day. some people. Senior year I had after day. Tana Not- goes a whole day because she's in band, and band is the very last class of the day. Ooh. Oh. Smells. Reese, his senior year at Patterson, so he had three classes. He only needed two. But the first one was the first <laughs> period. The second one he had to have a fill-in because the second class he needed was only third period. Oh, uh, yeah. So he literally had to have that second period filler for nothing. I had I had to do that, too. I just had to hang out in the library that's, for an hour. It was awesome, actually. It was a great time. Oh, that's when you yeah. did all the photo things. Yeah. hmm yeah, yeah, I didn't. Um, I only went half a day to school. I got off at 1130 every day. I had to go all day for all four years. That's Never a, had no half a day. Sucks for you. Sucks Not for me. Enough. Left that lunchtime at the scene. Yep, bingo, bingo. Which was uh twelve forty one. Four hours too oh, long. I was eleven. I, I, think I, was I got twelve forty one. I got to leave before lunch, so. And the one who went to school the whole day, his senior year, is the most educated in the room. <laughs> <laughs> The reason why I did so poorly in school is not because I wasn't smart. It's because uh, I had the capability of just listening to whatever the teacher said and then remembering it and being able to write it down on a test, but I wouldn't do homework. So that's why I was scored. Because homework is like the most, that's what you get, the most of your grade is based off of doing homework because they want to control you when you're not at school as well as in school. Which I, I made this argument then, and it still holds up today, which is you go to fucking work for eight fucking hours. You don't take work home and work for free. Go, some people do. Well, some, some people, people do. Some people do, but some people are simps. I'm saying that <laughs> making a student come home and do work after they've been there for eight fucking hours is immoral. You know, so obviously most of our listeners do not know, but when Chris and I were growing up, uh, our trailer caught on fire and we lost everything. But now I'm thinking about it because I remember the first thing that caught on fire was Chris's book bag. <laughs> was it? It was. Oh. 
It's on the vent right next to your bed. Oh, mm, that's. I know. Mm. I was not in the house when you. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> actually outside trying to make a fire. You were trying to build a fire when your house caught on fire. Yes. No, I don't remember. Oh that. yes, you were. Oh yes, that. you Maybe were. I, was. I don't know. I totally remember. I, I, it. I did used to make campfires in the yard. We had a big hey, yard. Hey, listen. It's okay. The statute of limitations. <laughs> is an arson. Yeah. As long as nobody yeah, right, is killed, right, you're good. Right. You're covered. Heard. Yeah. Wow. Hilarious. Now people are going to think you burned down your no trailer. Shit. That's all right. They think a lot of things because of what they <laughs> said. That's all right. This, Do we have this, to this say P words again? This, this podcast is not working out for me. <laughs> uh, every, every day I think, I hear a knocking on the door, I'm thinking, is, this, oh, is the law outside finally wanting to question me? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. The police been listening in. <laughs> And they're coming to get you, bud. Yep. All right. So, uh, what do we want to talk about next? Okay. This is some crazy shit that I just found out about yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about this, but uh, Senator Ben Cardin, from, he's a Democrat from Maryland, his intern, whose name is... Uh, we'll just call him Aiden. I'm, I'm just going to try to pronounce his name because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get it right. His first name is Aiden. And from what I'm looking at these letters here, I think his last name is pronounced... <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, I don't know what the fuck his last name is. But uh, <laughs> it looks like Baze Sorovsky. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I, I don't know what his name is. But uh, so he is a homosexual that is an intern, and he got caught. I'm saying he's homosexual because that is very relevant to the story. He was How caught. So? Well. <laughs> He was caught uh, making a homosexual sex tape where he was getting, well, the cheeks fr- clapped. Yeah, that's the phrase she wants I'm to sorry, use. What? <laughs> getting what? Getting his cheeks clapped. Oh, cheeks. Yeah. I thought he said cheese. I was like, what is this yeah. lingo? He was getting butt thanked uh, <laughs> in a Senate hearing room in the halls of Congress. All right. See, I would have called it getting his butthole straight. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be a so, little, at least a little bit PC. <laughs> so uh, they have, apparently this guy has, which I have not seen, but apparently he has a lot of photos online, which uh, heterosexual men do not want to look at, right. if you follow me. Um, so so uh, now that he's been accused of doing this, the interesting thing is he has not denied doing it. He has denied disrespecting the halls of Congress. That's how he put it when he was asked about the sex tape. He said, I have not disrespected all the Congress. But he did not say, uh, I was not filmed getting pounded out in the hallway. He did not say that. <laughs> right. So he did it. <laughs> right, right. Because he thinks what he's doing is not disrespecting right, the exactly. Congress. Therefore, exactly. he can say, I was not disrespecting. But I want you to, I, w- I don't want to gloss over the fact that you said that this activity was recorded on video for yep. some type of uh, pornographic release. And was also in Ligurgy. the common Ligurgy. <laughs> area of Congress, yep. right? Right, Senate hearing room, what we see on TV all the, the time. Senate yep. hearing room. Yep. Yeah, so they're not in there all the time. No, they're not no, in there. No, there's time. obviously a room that nobody's in, so he goes right. in and says, I can just go do my rump rangering right, right in here. Right, <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's yeah. fucking insane. It's fucking insane. So the reason why I'm bringing it up is because uh, you'll probably never hear of this story ever again because the mainstream media doesn't want to point this out because it was a Democrat and a homosexual doing it, not a straight Republican. Sure. You know, if a heterosexual Republican was fucking getting ridden yes. in the fucking halls of Congress, then we, there'd be never-ending news You're cycle. Right, right. You would but, uh, never hear the end of it. Yep. For a month, two yep. months, right. six months, a year, they yep. would still be talking about how that prostitute yep. was in there on, you know, Ben Carson's job. Right. So here's an interesting <laughs> side note about this. I don't remember if you guys uh, remember this. There was a young man named Madison Cawthorn. Uh, he was Republican, North Carolina, uh, running for District 11, which I can't remember if he actually... He won. W- he, was, he was actually... In, okay, he actually did serve for a while. He's paraplegic also. This is important. He's paraplegic. So he's doing a... Uh, that's right, because he was up for re-election. So he was doing a podcast, and in the podcast, he says, which the, the video is on YouTube. You can watch it. Take, don't have to take my word for it. He says that uh, he was approached by other members of Congress. He did not name names, but he was approached by other members of Congress to join in 
orgies and that he saw members of Congress snorting coke, lots of coke. So after he, after he did that, he did this shortly before he was up for re-election. Uh, all the Democrats in Congress basically made sure that he did not get fucking re-elected. Wow. Believe me, there was a huge campaign to make sure that he did not get re-elected. So I, her and I have argued about this, Angie, that is my wife. She, uh, she thinks I'm crazy when I say this, but the only reason why they would have pushed so hard to make sure he didn't get reelected is because he was telling the truth. Right. Because if he was just a crazy nut spouting stupid shit, they would just go, listen to this nut. And he obviously was willing to sing. Right, and he was willing to sing, yeah. So they ruined his career to make sure that he wasn't going to be heard from again. I'm going to be the devil's advocate in here. Of course I just you are. want you to know that what you just said sounds a lot similar to some QAnon-ish business. It might. You know, oh, my God, that is what I said. It very, very resembles QAnon shit. The difference a lot is of that QAnon shit is complete and utter Cuckoo. rubbish. Of course it is. My God. Here's the thing. Here's the difference between QAnon and this story. QAnon is just some anonymous bullshit that gets posted on the internet. This is a guy talking first-hand experience. Mm-hmm. So, I, like you know. he's like legit on a podcast and they're talking the, about the, it. And he was he was he was upset on the podcast. The, I can tell you right it. now that um, there's no way in my mind they would have fought so hard to make sure he wasn't reelected if he was full of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that it's bullshit because I'm here to tell you I'm I, I believe 180 million percent that there is some way crooked shit going on in Washington. Every one of them people over there is everyone, evil, everyone. evil, and they're thieves and robbers and crooks. And they're, all, they're all dirty, every one of them, which is why now you're having the infighting, but even among the Republican Party, eight of them want to do this, and ten of them want to do that, and the other ten don't want to do this. You know why? Because those people, they're, they have an R by their name, but they're still stealing. Right, they're still that's correct. Robbing. That's correct. They're still putting money in their pocket and getting rich, so they want to continue that trend. And mm-hmm. the real people that have just been elected this last cycle, that are trying to change the way things are going, there are only like ten of them. Right. <clears throat> Those are the only people that ain't stealing and ain't putting it because they only been there for three months. Right. You know, you let them stay there for 25, 60 more years. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll be, be stealing. stealing too. They'll be stealing. Yep. But that's the thing, you know. Yep. It's it's all crooked. Every one of them people over there. Yep, everyone's crooked, yep. That's why there should be term limits. Yeah. But there's no way to institute it because the people would have to vote on term limits are the ones that's serving. Yeah, you would have to basically term limit yourself. Right. And, again, we already know that they enjoy putting the money in their pockets and having insider trading information and yep. building $232 billion worth of wealth off of a $132,000 a year salary. Yep. Well... Have you ever seen the footage? I'm not, You know what? I will look for this video so we can post it on uh, the Facebook page if I can find it again. But the video does exist on YouTube. I've seen it. Uh, the the interview with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC. You know the one I'm talking about? I do know her. She's Where, a complete idiot. Well, she, it was whenever they were uh, they wanted to give themselves raises again. Because, mm-hmm. you know, if you can give yourself raises, why not? Raise, why not? Right. Let's vote so, so there was some pushback against them giving themselves raises. Uh, and she says in this interview, I swear to God, she says in this interview, if you don't let us have the raise, then we're going to have to get that money some other way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? What other kind of way is that? Right. Uh, AOC? Insider trading yeah. or uh, accepting lobby yeah. money to vote a certain way? Uh, is that what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. Of course Corrupt. you are. Corrupt bastards. It's just filthy. I mean, yeah. It, oh. But that woman there, any word that comes out of her mouth is complete rubbish. She's a straight idiot. Yep. She got zero cents. Oh, my God. Yeah, you should see the, the video. The, again, in the video with AOC when she won election, the look on her face is not the look that you want on the face of a person that just won political office. I mean, her, her look is like, holy shit. Now what do I, I do? No, no, no. It was not now what I do. It was like, oh, my God. Just won I, the lottery. I have just won the lottery. Yep, right. that is the look on her face. Right. It, it was not a, an appropriate look. She was just yep. a bartender, Yeah, right? she was a... You, a bartender and a slut, okay. allegedly. First of all, I believe she comes from wealth. But I, I want to say I, re- I don't know. that there was a big fuss, and correct me if I'm wrong because I just could certainly be wrong, um, that when she got into Congress, right, but before she actually started, she did like a GoFundMe because she couldn't afford an apartment in Washington, D.C., 
to get I, all these people to give her money uh, to pay know. for her rent. I don't. I, I mean, do remember that, right? Yeah, yeah. and it, and huh. I mean, you know, huh. it. Be, but you know, she wanted to be like in the best neighborhood, and right. I, you know, she she wasn't yeah. like the everyday I, Joe. Where I don't think she came from money, though. I, I don't. I, I, well, she's I, a white job. I could yeah, be no, she's a total nut. Yep, she's a total. There's so idiot. many of them. She's an idiot. She came out of the sewer somewhere. Yeah, that's what she came out of. Yep. Filthy so, whack job. Dirty hoe. Dirty hoe. Allegedly. And I think it's the vice president that spent more time on her knees, though. <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing. You cannot find that video. That video has been wiped from the internet. Googling them and really looking out for the for the president and the vice president. Yeah. What, who was it she went down on? Um, well, uh, which one? Uh, many, many uh, no, no, it was a mayor. Uh, all the names just escaped me. Something um, brown. Yeah, brown, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that video used to be, exist on the internet until she won <laughs> for vice president. Now you can't find it. With the actual video of yeah, her knees? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, but that video, is, you can't <laughs> find it. Willie Brown. Video. Willie Brown, that was it. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, bummer. You can't watch. You can't. You can't watch the porn tape of no vice president. presidential no, porn. No. <laughs> well, I would really want to see that. So. No, me either. Really. She's so disgusting. Yeah, I'm surprised she could stop laughing long enough to hold it in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when maybe, she gives maybe speeches, that was part of the give a speech? Maybe that's part of the skill when she's laughing and mm. it, you know, jiggles like the balls or something. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah, she, every speech she ever gives it just can basically consists of yeah, we the American people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the people do. <laughs> like that's it. She's an idiot. No, she, she laughs and then she just repeats the same right. thing over and over. She's the people are, are we. We are the people. <laughs> yep. The people, people are we. must come together as people <laughs> to be the people. Yeah, that's, that's how she gives the speech. She that's how she gives the question with a question. I love it. I love it. Because I know that the rest of the world is looking at us in awe. That we have like, yo, like the world. The world outside of the United States is looking at us thinking how wonderful it must be to live in this country because we are so powerful and led by such strong leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny when you yes. said that just now, I almost thought you were quoting one of her actual speeches. <laughs> you know we, what? the people, I might must have been. come together as people to be the people. <laughs> I might have been quoting that, I didn't even realize it. You just plagiarized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> we have to give her credit. We do, yes. For... I don't even know her name. That good. Hey, I have to give her credit because uh, I can't even call her name right now. Like I know I know it, but I, I don't even like it's not it's not coming to my is mind. It, Kamala Harris. Is it Kamala. Kamala or Kamala? No, it's Kamala. Is it Kamala? Oh, it's definitely Kamala. They they were calling her Kamala. Everyone was calling her Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. Well, and then they would they would show her saying something, say hi, I'm Kamala. Well, there is also a video of her saying Kamala. Yeah, there well, is she a video of her saying that. You know, has had a little too much in her mouth that she doesn't remember which one she is. So I don't know. <laughs> well, I was so. thinking the Ugandan warrior. You know, Kamala, the yeah. Ugandan warrior. That, yep. That's a wrestler. Right, right. Oh my God! So look, while we're offending half of the people that listen to this podcast, uh, I just want to point out something that happened the other day when I was at my grandparents' house. So uh, CNN is always on TV twenty four seven at that house, Lord right? Jesus. So I have so I walk by on TV. And on the TV, it actually says, I swear to God, it said, Donald Trump has not ruled out abusing his powers if reelected. To become dictator. Right? And I was like, did he say that? Because I don't recall him saying that. So, I, so I'm so i cracking up laughing like, this is so absurd. I can't believe they just said that. So I come back into the living room and I say it to her. I'm like, I'm like can you believe what they just said? So I say it. And then uh, one of my uncles is in the living room listening, and I say that, uh, that I straight say that statement, and he starts nodding his head in agreement. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Donald Trump did not say that he was going to abuse his powers in free like No, but he hasn't ruled it out. No, he hasn't he ruled has, it out. It all, it he all hasn't ruled they it out. The right. They say, Mr. Trump, would you deny reports that you plan on abusing your powers when you become president? And if he just doesn't answer the question... That's a, then that's a yes he I did. did not rule it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Donald that's Trump true. did not rule that's out true. that he would be abusing his powers. You could do that with anything. Yeah, that's Mr. true. Mr. Trump, would, how would you like to respond to the reports that uh, you were on your knees in the House Commons room getting butthole stretched? 
And if he doesn't answer the question, Donald Trump does not deny. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yep. how they do. It's so stupid. The mass media is so dumb. Yep. I, and I the miss... world follows. Like, they're mm-hmm. just so ignorant. I miss when Donald Trump used to call out report, reporters like, mm-hmm. that is a stupid question. <laughs> you went to journalism school for that? You know, like shit like that. Well, if you think that was entertaining, if. He gets reelected. If he gets reelected, it's going to be a madhouse. I can't imagine the level of Trump derangement syndrome that will be happening. It will be. I love it. I hope it happens. I I kind of hope it happens, but then again, like, I don't know if I can even handle it because it's just going to be so absurd. It's it's already ridiculous. Hilarious. Hilarious. They probably have a a, a backup plan, like another COVID kind of thing. Here's what's weird. Here's what's weird. We're going to talk about Trump derangement syndrome for a second. I don't like Bill Clinton. I don't like Barack Obama, but if you say their names, I don't start going, oh, 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 Hitler, oh, oh my God, I can't believe it, oh, dictator. Right. I mean, what the fuck just call, I just go, yeah, I didn't like the guy. Right, right. I mean, just, that's it. I don't right. know why people get so upset. And when they were elected president to their specific offices, none of us said, right. oh my God, I'm going to move out of this country. Right. None of us said, he's so terrible, I'm going to assassinate him. None of us did any of those things. None of us lost our minds. When we lost an election, we lost an election. We dealt with the repercussions for four years, and we were okay. Yeah. Well, These people think that it's okay to lose their minds yeah. and say, I'm going to move out of the country. You know how many people have said that and been complete full of shit? Yeah, they're, right. they're not gone. No, they're no, not. They they we still here. Although, right. I will say this. This did happen when Barack Obama was like president. I was working at the casino Low Bears at the time, and uh, there was this woman who worked behind the uh, front desk and uh, for the hotel. And I remember her, there was this thing going around. A lot of people were saying is that uh, Barack Obama was the Antichrist. I remember a lot of people saying that. And she said, I think I really think Barack Obama's the Antichrist, and he's going to bring about the end of the world. So I looked at her, and I said, no, you don't, you don't believe that. She goes, no, I really do. I said, so let me get this right. You believe that the end of the world is coming, and you're choosing to spend it working at this fucking casino? <laughs> right. Why aren't you sitting on a beach in Hawaii? Right. That's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. You fucking liar. <laughs> yeah, that's the closest I, I that I got with Barack Obama to people having Trump derangement right. syndrome. But, but I mean, it, yeah, it was absurd. It didn't last long. I don't know whether I don't even remember how that got started, Antichrist thing. But uh, yeah, I, I just remember some people saying that at the casino. I was like, you guys don't really believe that, though. No. Because if you did, you would be living your last yeah, yeah. hours. You'd be running around naked. Way, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no way you would be working at a casino. Right, for you can't yeah. have any fear of being fired <laughs> right. because you're not going to have a job <laughs> right. to work at anymore tomorrow. Pull a anyway. Chris. Right. Throw your badge yeah, at him. That's it. <laughs> My goodness. So, all right, that was a, that was a political... Uh, nope, there's one more. There's one oh, more. there's one more. Oh my God! Well, you take it away because you you actually told me about this. I didn't tell you. You tell you told me. Um. So we brought we brought up um about the FCC voting to give the rights back to the government for broadband and things like that. Well, Louisiana is set to be the first one that's going to be bringing all of that to a house next to your cube. Um, Louisiana is supposed to be getting $1.35 billion um, begin, to begin to connect homes to the Internet in 2024. Um, some homes um, will be available to get $30 off their, off their Internet bill unless you're on tribal land and you can get $75 off. And then some people are going to get Internet for completely free. Depends on if you're on home, you know, housing assistance or food stamps and things like that. Or if you're a student, you're going to be able to get stuff for free. Um, <laughs> this is assuming yeah. that Louisiana actually does what it's well, supposed to with the money. But also, it, that sounds great. That actually sounds awesome. But there's always catches when the government gives you shit for free. Yeah, they haven't released what the catches are yeah, yet. Yeah, well, the catches are going to be less free. Well, but. Louisiana also has to finish filling out the paperwork for it. And it has to be turned in by December 27th. Yep. So, we still got a, 10 days for Louisiana to fuck it up. So. Hmm. I tell you what, they sure ruined that marijuana thing. They have no idea what they're doing with that. Yeah, that's right. So it, it, Louisiana, in Louisiana right now, it is medicinal marijuana is legal. However, only one or two doctors in the entire state can prescribe it. Correct. And only two dispensaries in the entire state can dispense it. So when you go to your family doctor to try to get a prescription for marijuana, 
He can't prescribe it. No one can. So it's really a bunch of red tape. And I'm thinking what they're doing now is holding out for the highest bidder. Mm. So the doctor's going to have to go to Congress and say, hey, I want to open a marijuana clinic. I'm going to give you $2 billion or $2 million or whatever the dollar amount might be if you allow me to have the license to prescribe it, you know? So now they're bidding. <clears throat> the problem with that is is that when we're on the back end of it, recreationally, Colorado, I think I mentioned this before, the first year that they had legalized it across the board, recreationally and all, at the end of the year, they had a five, was it made, I want to say billion, but I don't really know if that's the right number. $5 billion surplus on the back end of their statewide budget. A surplus. Mm -hmm. Which means they had all of that money left over after they paid for all of their bills throughout the entirety of the year. And that money was a direct result of legalization of marijuana. The reason mm -hmm. for that influx of money is because all the states around them, it was illegal. So people were traveling into right. Colorado yep, to get yep. it and then leave it out of yep. Colorado, right? <clears throat> Louisiana is going to be the last one to follow that. <laughs> so we're not going to get anything. There's not going to be any benefit to right. it whatsoever other than the fact that we're just going to follow somebody else's lead, you know? Right. If we would jump on the front edge of it, we could have to states like Texas and Alabama and other places coming across and spending money right. here in right. our state. Before, if we jumped on the front end, but we, we we're just too stupid to do that. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a forward thinking way of, you know, I, I've seen the good that marijuana can do. Right. And in my several years of law enforcement, I've never seen it do the bad that I've seen alcohol do. So I guess that's why I'm pro. All right. Pro green. All right. I mean, it is green, right? So if you're like a vegan and shit, you should. Before that, medicinal right. property. Correct. It is the land All curing you. should love right. marijuana. Right. How about that logic? Yep. It's homeopathic. Can't argue with it. Can't argue with it. It comes from the land. But yeah, Louisiana is not really yep. on the razor's edge. As, as I've stated many times, Louisiana sucks. Although LSU sure does uh, promote a lot. Hey, come join the business. Want to learn how to... Grow and farm marijuana. Come take our program. Huh. They actually have a degree program for like marijuana horticulture. Wow. Stuff. Yeah. There. Well, it's because one of the major dispensaries is in Baton Rouge. Yeah, they're mm. growing. They're growing in LSU. All right. 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 Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the smell. Like to be a grad student in that department. Yeah, no. but that's the best part about all of the medicinal purposes of it that you don't have to smell it. I know you, you get a tincture. To, yeah, you can get tinctures. There's. Yeah. Edibles, there's pills, pills yep. tablets. I mean, it's just a medicine. It really right. is a medicine. Because well, no, um, one of the guys, when we in Lake Charles, he was like, you really need to get on medical, medical marijuana for your migraines because it's really, really, you have bad migraines. And I had to find a doctor. I've been trying to find a doctor that can do it. I had to go to Baton Rouge. Yeah, he they, told me. And I was like, I'm not, it, going, I'm not going to Baton Rouge. And your insurance also won't cover it, so it's going to cost $200. Every time you fill a strip. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's $139 it is. just to get your medical marigal, marijuana card in Louisiana. Yeah, it's garbage. It's yep. just trash. It's complete bureaucracy, a yep. bunch of red tape, all about them making sure that they get their hands yep. on the right. money. Yep. Garbage. Yep. But that's how Lu I was just saying that just to you know promote sure. how Louisiana is not really on the front edge of sure. the thought process. No, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. So going off just on a slight tangent, but still about marijuana. This is how stupid young people are today. So, um, tangentially speaking, huh. <laughs> you know, a lot of jobs, drug test people, and sure. you know, you can understand that. And of course, if, if you're suspected of being drunk or whatever, you're going to get fired or sent home or something at the very least. Well, so, uh, they had these young kids saying, I say young kids, I mean, I don't know, 18 to 25 age range or whatever, mm -hmm. saying that if, you had medical marijuana and you tested positive at work, they couldn't fire you. Wrong. I said, <clears throat> um, excuse me, you realize that if I have a prescription for Xanax, mm -hmm. yet I take so many Xanax yep. at work that I can't perform my duties, I can fucking get in trouble for that, yeah. right? 
I said, just because you can take something doesn't mean you can do it at work. Right. I, no, but, I, but that they couldn't believe that. No, that is a common misconception, it which is. I don't understand. Because I remember when, I don't know, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, one of them was running. I wanted to legalize all drugs. And I remember saying, that sounds like a good deal to me. I'd be showing up at work high every day. And I'd be like, no, you, no, wouldn't. you wouldn't. And I was like, what you mean? I was like, because you can't show up to work drunk every day and, and fucking alcohol is legal. Alcohol and they look at legal. me like I was crazy. Right. right. Yeah, alcohol has been legal yep. since the 30s. It's not like you know? a cigarette break. You don't right. get to go get a, a joint break. Yeah, they're idiots. They're idiots. Whatever. Yeah, just because it's legal doesn't mean you can do it at work. Right. Yep. Common sense, people. Right. Have some common sense. I need my listeners to make sure that they wrap their brains around having some common sense. That's what I need y'all to do. Okay? I don't think it's our listeners. It's, I know. it's the people around I'm just making sure us. that the people that I surround myself with <laughs> are able to have that common sense and to, to grasp that. And I think they are. I just want to reinforce, you know? Okay. A little positive reinforcement for my You group. can do it. Get fun. That's right. <laughs> so, fuck it. We're being political. The first episode we ever did was political. People didn't like it, but fuck it, we're going to end up politics in there. Might as well. This is how we're rolling tonight. So, something else that you and I have actually argued about. You didn't argue. You had off a whole podcast. discussion about it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Okay. This thing that happened in um, California about a month ago. This man named Vince Reese. Reese. Reese is how you pronounce it? Excuse me. Yeah, just like Christina. Whatever. Okay. Reading's hard. So... <laughs> Um, this is a wealthy man. He lives in a $2 million home, okay? Gated, right? But not a really high gate, though. No, it really wasn't a high gate, but nonetheless, still gated. I don't even what have What would you fence. say, about four feet, six feet? I don't even have a fence. It was, well, no, I mean, no, it, was, it was probably, the, in all honesty, about the height of me. I mean, it well, wasn't high at all. Yeah, some people were able to jump okay, over the gate. Okay, just so people know, right. Angie is not six feet tall. Right. I'm five foot two <laughs> and a quarter. Right, so. Was it made out of wood? <laughs> Oh my God! Here we go! Here we go! So, uh, so the guy comes home from work, or he came home from the gym, I think. So he comes home. Nonetheless, he comes home at night. He's got a tea in his hand. Uh-huh. Okay, iced tea. Like yeah, a drink. right, like a drink. Yeah. So he's got a tea in his hand. So he's at the door, and, and uh, when you get to his door, there's like a little, like an alleyway, I guess, um, that leads up to his door, the way the house is built. So he's he's got his key in the door. He's trying to unlock it, of which his wife. And his uh, baby and his nanny are all in the house. What uh, what age is this? The baby's like baby? six months old. Yeah, the baby's it's, young. It's, I mean, it's, it's an a baby, infant. Baby. A five month old. The baby was five month old. Oh, okay. Six. So, th- those three people are in the house, right? So he's unlocking the door. These two guys wait for him. They wait for him to drive up, get out. Then they jumped over the fence. He's got there's two cameras at his house, as a security system, so you can see it from two angles. So everything that happened, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's recorded. They wait for him. They jump over the fence. They come at him, guns drawn. As soon as they get to him in the alleyway, put the gun in his back. He fucking throws the tea at him, whips around, pulls out a gun like his dad is John McClane and just starts capping around, you know. And uh, so um, somehow he did not hit him, which the guy looked like he had a little bit of training with the gun. I mean, the way he was holding the gun, he, he got against cover. I mean, he got down. He You know, he was stabilizing himself. He didn't look like he... He wasn't just randomly pulling the trigger, waving the gun around. I mean, he was, you know, but somehow he didn't hit them guys. Uh, so he shoots at the guys. They shoot at him, run away. Cops show up, and uh, they did shoddy police work, apparently. They left some shell casings, which would be evidence. They didn't pick them up. So the guy gets pissed off. He yells at him for doing shitty police work, goes on the Internet, criticizes him on the Internet for doing shitty police work. So they removed his concealed carry permit. They, yeah, it literally says LAPD gives no reason behind. Yeah, they won't give a specific reason, but the fact that, that he yelled at him and then criticized him on the internet, I, everybody feels is the reason why they, they removed his concealed I, carry permit. But I think he was also at the end of his rope with it because in June, his house was robbed, and in May, his car got robbed. Right, yeah. Well, I don't and give so a he shit. Reported if to I LAPD. have a concealed carry permit and you take it away and don't give me a reason, I don't give a fuck. Like, give me a reason. Yep. That is my right. Hard. See, that's what people he's don't... Suing, he's suing them right now. Yeah, go straight to the Supreme Court. That's what people don't understand about the authorities that be. People say they can't... You know, tell people stuff that 
people do that's wrong. And they go, they can't do that. Yeah, they can do whatever the fuck they want because they're in charge. And whether you think it's right or not is irrelevant. They're in charge. They can do it. This is not the fucking movies where they do something wrong and you give an impassioned speech and they realize they're wrong and then they fucking change their opinion. No, no, no. In the real world, if they want to fucking take away your rights, it can happen. So just be aware of that, people. I'm just saying, when you go to the voting box, just remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you said we argued about this. We didn't really argue. Well, I just pointed out a simple fact. The only, I don't think, I think what it is is that, that gives the appearance of being... You're going to talk bad about us, so we're just going to take what we gave you with this concealed carry mm-hmm. and see how you like that. It's kind of how it looks. The only valid reason for them doing that would be as if he spoke outwardly and made threatening mm-hmm. comments towards the LAPD. Right. You know, if he well, threatened right. to use that concealed carry permit to do harm to someone, then they could do that, and right. it would make sense. Sure. But you said they don't they don't exhibit any of that. They well, don't show any of that. There are multiple people who report on this, news stations, uh-huh. YouTube channel, and none of them mentioned him threatening the cops. Yeah. Which is why I don't think he did do it. Well right. I mean you would think the yeah, first thing the cops would say is right. a uh, right. POP deal. Right. Pissing yep. off the police. That's exactly what happened, yes. But yeah, yeah, like you said, we've seen people in positions of power that can do whatever the hell they want to do. The fact that Georgia uh, DA can file charges on that police officer shooting at the what was it Wendy's Burger McDonald's King. McDonald's Burger King whatever mm-hmm. yeah he oh, filed yeah. charges on the police officer yeah. without the investigation the Georgia yeah. Bureau of Investigation didn't even finish their investigation the DA says mm. he's a Democrat DA he files charges yeah. I'm gonna arrest you for murder yeah and then they're also a grand jury jurisdiction so not only can you not file those charges as the DA, without the investigation being complete. Oh, the grand jury. But they also have to put it before a grand jury to indict. And it never even went to a grand jury. So he skipped two steps in that dude's due process. Please tell me he sued. I don't know Uh, what's... I I mean, I don't know what ever happened to it since then. He ended up getting cleared. The guy got his job back and he got reinstated and all that. Because the Georgia Bureau of Investigation cleared him. Right. Yeah. Oh. But mm-hmm. the fact that he did that, the DA right. could do that yeah. just because he wants to do that, doesn't mean doesn't mean that it'll stick. It doesn't yep. mean that it'll stay there forever. But he still did it, and yeah. he can still do it again. They can still fuck up your life. That's right. Oh yeah. Without yeah, you know it, you know yeah you may not go to jail or whatever, but then people are questioning you or mm-hmm. looking at you sideways or no I'm not going to hire you because of this. I mean your job yep. your life could be completely Damn, fucked up destroyed. Yeah, that's why you got to be really careful about who you vote for, even in small local, local elections. elections yeah. Because those people got power to do bad shit, too. Yep. Well, and a lot of them, the, the local is just a stepping stone to get where they want to be. Right. Yep. They're that's learning right. how to play the game. That's right. That's right. Their name out there. That's right. Well. So, uh, Reagan, I'm going to throw it over to you. You had you had mentioned a couple of topics that you want to talk about. Do you want to talk about the uh, killer lemonade, or you want to talk about the baby box, or? Oh, uh, we can talk about the lemonade. So Panera has this. Uh, I think it's called charged lemonade. Two people have died so far, from like directly from consuming this lemonade. Um, one was a college student, I believe. The other was a. Um, um, mentally disabled person. Now, he wasn't mentally disabled so far like he, he needed a caregiver. I mean, I think he lived on his own and everything, but obviously he he was, you know, he had some intellectual struggles. Um, Panera's advertised this as just having as much caffeine as their coffee, yet not even their biggest coffee had near as much caffeine as one glass of this lemonade. Plus, they had like 20 teaspoons of sugar in each cup. So people are ordering this drink, and you know, it's lemonade, they're drinking lemonade. They're not thinking it's an energy drink, which is what it is. It's caffeine and sugar completely. And they're drinking two and three glasses, and and it's causing like heart attacks and stuff. Good Lord. So now, I'm not sure if they're pulling it off the shelves or what they're doing, but I know they had to put like several uh like disclosures and stuff all around it saying you know please don't drink if you're pregnant and well, there was, you know the first one that died was a girl she had a heart heart problem 
And they didn't know she had a heart problem until she died from the charges on the name. Yeah. That's fucked. Well, didn't yeah. you say that it started... Uh, didn't you say that the lemonade also had some type of guarana? Oh, yeah. It also has a... Yeah, it's guarana. so... Guarana. What the fuck yeah. is that? Well, that's the same thing that was in all of the Red Bulls and the Monsters and stuff oh. in the beginning. Whenever, Remember when people were having heart attacks yes, with those? Yes, I do remember. And they had to take that yes. crap out. Well, that's but the same thing. one yeah. cup of this, this lemonade has more... Caffeine than a monster and a Red Bull combined. Ooh. One cup. I and people try this. Yeah, that's people some don't eliminate, man. Yeah. People don't know that they're not thinking that. They're not thinking this is an actual energy drink. You sure. know, they're thinking, okay, it's like coffee, it'll give me a little charge, you know, but it, it's in all actuality it is exactly that. It is an energy drink. All right. Cool. Yeah. All right. The mango <clears throat> yuzu, I guess, citrus charge lemonade. Has fifty grams of sugar in it, and two hundred and ten calories. Well, the calories I think are the least of people's worries at this point. Well, I mean, mm. still. Yeah. Ooh. I remember. I want to give a shout out to the OG of them all, Joke Cola. You remember huh. Joke Cola? Yes. Do, yeah. Chris likes Joke Cola. Joke Cola. No, you like Surge. That was the OG Surge, of the yeah. energy drink. Surge is what Chris likes. I like. I like anything with sugar. To be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. I. Uh, I remember working construction and having to stay up all hours of the night building shit. So we would uh, drink Mountain Dew and eat uh, Skittles. Yeah. And <laughs> to Jack, I said I was out to fucking stay awake. What did you say? Crazy. Jolt Dr- and kill. No, Skittles? drink Mountain Dew. Mountain, Mountain Dew, Dew and, and uh, Skittles. Skittles. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we used to do when we ran uh, the uh, all night study sessions in yeah. college. Yeah. We would just cram and jam back Mountain Dews and. Sweet tarts. Yeah. When I was in college, somebody introduced me to no dose, and I was like, "Yeah, I got a big exam tomorrow. Let me try that." Fuck, I couldn't see after I took that shit. Couldn't focus I your eyes. I've I was never like, been able to take any of that. I said, "I'll stuff. never take that shit again." Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like how my skin crawls. I didn't yeah. sleep, but I also yeah. didn't study. I remember I, it says <laughs> on a box may cause irritability, and I remember I was a security guard at the time, and I worked in a guard shack all by myself. And I would I would be there uh, watching over the park lot and shit while people were at work. So like there was nobody to interact with, so it was hard to stay awake. So that's why I started taking it. And I remember I actually had a I brought a coloring book with me to help me stay awake, and uh, which was allowed. And so I took the pill and I'm and I'm coloring. And I remember I, I kind of screwed up a little bit of coloring. I'm like goddamn, so let me see. <laughs> she started scratching all over the page, and I ripped it up. And I thought, oh, I guess it does cause there. <laughs> 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 With all Roy and Rage on the, on I was like, bro, yeah, I got to be careful when I take this. Oh, my God, I love That's it. That's awesome. Trying to make you more angry than yeah, when you're already yeah, on. Yeah, wow, yeah, that was, that was not good. And for not you, good. we don't we don't need you to reach another level <laughs> of irritability. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. You're already at a high level of irritability. Yep. 24-7, my friend. Yep. Even in his sleep, he's mad. <laughs> I hear him every once in a while going, get that motherfucker. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I remember Margot Lee told me one time I was sleeping in, uh, all of a sudden, I just shouted out, Motherfucker, you cheating! <laughs> while I was sleeping. <laughs> so I don't know what I was dreaming about. I wasn't happy about it. It was a good Monopoly game. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> Stop all that cheating. <laughs> <coughs> so it took us 21 episodes, but we finally came up with the name for Reagan's Random Thoughts. Yeah. So from now on, we'll be calling it Down the Rabbit Hole with Reagan. I love it. Down I the absolutely the love hole. it. Down the Rabbit Hole, Reagan. So take us down that rabbit hole. Okay, so uh, it's football season. And so, of course, uh, football is on like daily almost. And I've always, I mean, this has been on my mind for years. The kicker, right? The kicker who's going to kick the field goal or the extra point, whatever, always wears two different shoes and I don't understand why this just completely baffles me now Bodie has explained to me that the kicking foot wears a compact shoe based on physics so that they can kick the ball better I get that I got no problem with that but why does the other shoe have to be a completely different color and style why can that at least coordinate with the shoe he's wearing and does the kicking shoe only come in one or do you get a pair do you get two of the same 
like both are right if you're a righty both are left like there's so many questions that go along with this it just it i it really bothers me poor fashion she's right. concerned with the right. fashion choices no it's ocd <laughs> it's ocd like the shoes should match i don't want to be watching his foot i'm there to watch football not his foot <laughs> Does it bother you when people wear different color socks? Oh my God, yes it does. Well, my girls do that all the time. Like you gotta hide your feet. Oh. Uh, I wish, I really wish I had a funny answer for why they wear two different color shoes in football, but I don't. I don't yeah. know why they do. Well, I can tell you the real reason, and the, the truth is that obviously when you're kicking a football, there's a lot of physics involved. Right? Sure. And you can imagine that the, if you kicked a, or you hit a football, let's say you hit a football with a broom. And the bristles, the bristles of the broom are all loose and just straggly. You're not going to kick it as far as if you took that broom and you squeezed all of those bristles together mm-hmm. as tight as you could with 150 rubber bands. Then you would hit the football much further. So that's what these kickers do with their feet. They literally get a shoe that's like two sizes too small for their foot so that they can squeeze their foot to be as dense as possible, increasing gotcha. the density with which they kick this football. So that's why their kicking foot is a different shoe than their other foot. Right. Now, that's the reason why they don't match is because if you squeezed both of your feet like that, <laughs> you can see how it would be a problem trying to run up to the ball to kick so, it. So, is one smaller than the other? Is that what you're saying? Like one yes. Is- yes. Yes. Oh, okay. okay, so what do they do with the other shoe of each pair? Give them to somebody. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, that's ways to choose. Well, it's very possible that they only buy one of the of the kicking shoe. Right. Oh, it might just be made in right. Well, why can't that kicking shoe manufacturer that was be a monetary, you know, bonus to them if they made a corresponding shoe for the other foot that at least matched I got you have a saying. pair of shoes. This is a pair of kicking shoes. One for your cooking <laughs> kicking foot and another one to match. I got you. For your non kicking foot. I suppose it's possible. That when considering all of the mathematics and physics involved with kicking a football, they don't consider fashion. It's probably... They should. <laughs> it's probably why, why, they all, don't offer why, why don't any of the kickers ever wear the same color? Can, can they at least do that? I mean, are well, they all fucking stupid and colorblind? Have you looked at every kicker's shoes? They right. Might, they might have some. They, they might have matching pairs. I don't know, but I know a lot of times I'm watching these kickers, whether they're on the sidelines, like getting ready, and I'm going, oh, my God, again with the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Obviously, this is because we're men, but I promise you I've lived for 50 years, and I have never, ever, you ever. You haven't lived for 50 years yet. Oh, in a couple of days. So, actually, the episode. You may not make it. Once again, you may not make it to fifty. The goddamn episode and after my fucking birthday happens, so I I will not not talk about. I don't know why you guys. I don't know why you guys can't understand how this works. But anyway, so I have never considered the shoe thing ever. That was never crossed my mind. So thank you. Correct. I consider your clothing for you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for taking us down that rabbit hole. That no one ever. I like it. I mean, there's an equipment manager, so the kicker wouldn't have to involve himself. Well, Somebody's all, there to do it for him. He there's makes also money. emails, Reagan. Get on it. Email. Nobody uses Here's emails. an interesting bit of trivia. Nobody uses emails. Did you email. know that the, the kicker who held the record for the longest field goal for the longest time, it's not the record anymore, but he was a New Orleans Saints kicker. Nice. And he kicked the ball, a field goal, of like I want to say it was like 63 yards. Right, And that yes. record stood for the longest time. It's right. not the record now. Correct. I think the record now is like 65 or 66. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Which I think was just last weekend. But, maybe. But the interesting bit of trivia about that kicker is that he only had half a foot. Which half? <laughs> That's a good question. It had to be the back half because if it was just the front half, it would be. Oh, wait. Or was he missing half of his? I mean. Like, what, did he have his big toe and the other toe? No, I think, I think from, like, the toes area back is what he had. Yeah. And he didn't have any toes on that foot whatsoever. Okay, so if you were missing four toes but had your big toe, do you think you'd rather just get rid of the big toe? Uh, well, no, um, no. I would say no because it's for you balance. need that for stability and walking purposes. Yep, balance. Right. That kicker was a professional kicker. He only had half a foot. You're right. Yeah. So. And he kicked the ball 63 yards. Yeah. So I don't think he might have had though. a prosthetic though. <clears throat> Were the laces out? I don't know. <laughs> 
Oh, Einhorn. Yeah, Finkel. Finkel. Einhorn. Yeah. Finkel. <laughs> <laughs> the links were out. And then, and damn Moreno shake his head down. <laughs> uh, I think the other question oh, is, did you tuck? Oh, the tuck. Oh. The tuck rule. Yeah, I don't think he could have kicked it with a tuck. You know what's messed up? Nope. Because when she just said the tuck, yeah. I know she was referring to Pet Detective. Yes. But my mind went to... The crying it game? It puts the lotion on its skin. Oh, oh I thought you oh, were right. right. thinking of the crying game. Right. Do you remember that tuck I rule? do remember that tuck rule. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd fuck me. <laughs> right. right. God, it's so sexy. That's got to be one of the creepiest, yes. creepiest scenes in a movie ever. That guy is in a movie that I will recommend that probably very few people have heard of, but not tonight. <clears throat> what was his name? Wild Bill? What was it? Yeah, in the no, movie he was Wild not Wild, Wild Bill. Bill. Uh, oh. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was the yeah, Wild, Bill. Was yeah, Wild, Bill. Was Wild Bill? Yeah, oh, he was I Wild thought Bill. That, okay. I'm, no, I'm sorry. The reason why I'm thinking he was not was because I'm thinking how that actually the character was based on Ed Gein. Ed Gein. Ed Gein, Ed Gein whatever Ed his Gein. name was. Yeah. Oh, the Texas Chainsaw yeah. people. <clears throat> yeah, right? which was totally exaggerated. That's not what happened at all. Bruh. But anyway, no, he used to, but he did used to cut off people's skin and up. make. Yep. Best introduction to a villain ever, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. An introduction to Leatherface will never be topped, in my opinion. Which is. So you that. enjoyed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I don't think that Texas Chainsaw Massacre is as good as everybody hypes it up to be. It's okay. Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, far superior. Although they went comedy, and yet it's a superior movie. So I don't know what that means. But the it means that the first one was the, intended it's, to be comedy as well. Well. What do you think? Well, because when you watch this horror movie and there's people, when you hear somebody coming around the corner with a chainsaw, you fucking run. Right, yeah. What's wrong with these fucking people? Fucking well, They're just chilling. They're hanging out. They're just like, <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, my gosh. Look, it's a guy with a chainsaw. You know? Well, I'm I've been bounced, bro. Why I'll, do people I'll, I'll run away in this Actually, I would not have ran. I would have just died right there on the yeah, spot. Yeah, all, all I know is the introduction the of night. Leatherface. When you see Leatherface for the first time, I remember, I'll never forget watching that and just being like, holy shit, what am I in for in this movie? <laughs> and, it, and it never lived up to that introduction, but it was, <laughs> but I'm just it saying was that was, though. that was a great introduction. Yeah. So you didn't think so. Freddy Krueger was a good monster? I didn't say that. I said, oh. it, the introduction, I said, I said, the, said the, the introduction. No, no, I said the way they introduced the <laughs> character of Leatherface was the best introduction in a horror movie I've ever seen. It was just so, uh, in and my they, opinion, they in my door, opinion, right? when he opens up the door and he whacks the guy with the th with that sledgehammer and then he slams the door shut. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I just personally, I liked it. Also, I didn't say that you said that. I just asked you if you didn't think that Freddy Krueger was no, a good No, Freddy Krueger was an awesome character. Yes, yeah. an amazing villain. Yes, an amazing, yeah, I, I an agree. amazing interview. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, like Freddy Krueger. If I'm given a cool. choice between like Jason and sure. Michael Myers okay. and Freddy right. Krueger and Leatherface, I think Freddy Krueger is probably go my Freddy? Yeah. All right. Who do you choose? Uh, Michael. Michael yeah, Myers. Michael yeah. Myers. And I'm not talking about this poo poo movies they made. I'm talking about just the original first movies. Yeah. I'm going to go Michael Myers. You know, Captain yeah. Kirk was the face they yes, used. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Also, uh, a lot of people don't know this. It's hard to tell when you watch the movie, but in order to uh, have, you know, correct, cool shadowing and stuff on the mask, one of the things they did, of course, you, we all know they painted it white. Sure. But uh, the underneath the chin, and there's like a, uh, an area underneath the chin and a big stripe that goes down the front of his neck which is still flesh colored. You can't really tell unless you really pay attention closely and watch, but yeah, they left that part flesh colored so it'd have cool shadows and stuff whenever they were filming it. So okay. Just a little movie trivia that I'm just going to throw out there real quick. Very yeah. nice. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so uh, while we're talking about movies, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish up all movie deaths so that uh, yep, th there will be no more to discuss. I have nine more, and I'll be caught up till Alec Baldwin killing somebody on the set of Russia. Murderer. So, yeah. So I'm going to start off in year 1990, and I'm going to just do them all to, to modern day. So. <clears throat> so there may be some that I have missed. I don't know. but So if anybody knows of any I've missed, let us know, and I'll yeah, give Facebook them a shout-out in season two. But I think I've covered everyone. That, so here we go. <clears throat> 1990. Delta Force 2. Chuck Norris movie, all right? So what happened was Chuck Norris hit a guy so fucking hard he killed him. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> but man, I, I was waiting for the punchline. Could you imagine if that was true? It sh that should be true. That should be true. Well, we don't know that it's not. Well, yeah, that's true. So, uh, what actually happened was a helicopter crash during filming, killing five. Uh, there was a stuntman named Jeff Brewer who was a stuntman from Roadhouse. Uh, they mentioned that. I don't know why that was a big deal, but uh, and then uh, the pilot. 
a uh, cameraman, a key grip, and a gaffer. They were all killed in the crash. So, man, man, being in... I guess the lesson that we've learned here is that if you're filming a movie, do oh, not yeah, get in something that leaves the ground. Right. Because there's a good chance you will be killed. That's correct. And, yeah, Especially in a helicopter. But Apocalypse Now, they didn't leave the ground. No, but there was something that was off the ground above them. What the hell are you talking about Apocalypse Now? I did not mention Apocalypse Now in movie depths. Yeah. Wasn't she was that talking about previously? Twilight, though. Oh, you're talking about Twilight oh, Zone. Yeah. Why am I thinking Apocalypse I don't know now. why either, because you don't know shit about movies. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> okay, well, excuse me. I am wrong. Excuse all right, so me. now... It doesn't happen often. Let's all take note that I was wrong in the season This is the one that, all, that we know one. about the yeah, most. This right. One. This, I guess, Reagan says this is the most famous one, which I guess it could be. 1994, The Crow. Brandon, Brandon Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. everybody knows about Brandon Lee getting shot. So... What's interesting is that uh, he he wasn't shot because of one mistake. He was shot because of two mistakes. Oh. So that's interesting. I didn't know that until I actually did the research for it. So what happened was, once again, 44 Magnum. Apparently, that's if you're in a movie with that's a 44 a Magnum, yeah. yeah, be careful. You're gonna get shot. So okay, so an, so a guy was using a 44 Magnum. You know, there's a bunch of bad guys shooting at Brandon Lee and stuff in several scenes. So uh, in this one scene, the 44 Magnum was loaded with dummy rounds that were not properly made. Okay, and so the way it, the way it was made was uh, all the gunpowder was removed from the round, but the primer was left in. Mm-hmm. So when when they pulled the trigger, the primer had it had enough force to wedge the bullet in the barrel. It, it went partially into the barrel, but didn't come out. Yeah. And so nobody knew that the the bullet was in the barrel. Mm-hmm. All right. So after they filmed that scene, they removed the dummy rounds and they replaced them with blanks, mm-hmm. which have gunpowder in them. Right. All right. So now they're doing another scene where they got blanks in them with gunpowder shooting at Brandon Lee. And when he pulled the trigger and the gunpowder went off, the explosion shot the, the bullet that was in the barrel out as though it was just a regular bullet because there was some, you know, enough gunpowder to be, a, you know, a large enough force. It shot it out just like he was shooting a real bullet at him. And uh, that's what hit him and killed him. Shot him in the stomach. Now, you know, uh, I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people don't. He did not die right then and no, there. That's right. He actually went to the hospital yes. and correct. spent like six hours that, in surgery. Yes, that is correct, which I was just about to say. Thanks for interrupting me. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the year and the title of the next movie, and then you tell him what happened. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? You're the one who interrupted me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, look, the look that you get. Just waiting for more that information. Look. So, uh, for those that don't know this, he uh, spent six hours in surgery before he... Uh, and he just never woke up, basically, and he died. He succumbed. So, yep. But they did try to save him, so. He was such a good-looking guy. That's what happened. That's what happened. And actually, that incident really kicked up safety on movie sets. That's when they were really like, holy shit, we got to stop shooting our main actors. It's not good financially. Right. So that's when they really started cracking down on safety, which has resulted in some stupid shit. Because, like, there are a lot of movies that get made now where they don't even use real guns with blanks. They use plastic guns, and then they CGI the gun flash and all that, which looks terrible. It in no way looks real. I hate it so much. I wish that it never happened, but I don't think I like how you just said they learned to stop shooting at their main characters as if, you know, just put some extras in there and shoot at them. Yeah, That's okay. body doubles. I don't know if you've noticed this from the <laughs> list, but when extras get killed, very few people give a shit. Right. Yeah. They're not even named. Yeah, like, right. In, yeah, in, they in just say, thing earlier, yeah. he said such and such an actor was killed. And the gaffer, right? And the the mic guy, and the audio guy, right? right? They right. don't even know their which, name. Which I probably could have looked it up if I had cared, but I didn't care either. So I'm just saying, whenever whenever somebody who's not the main guy gets killed, nobody gives a shit. Which would be, which means that there's probably some other deaths that have taken place that I don't just even know even about because nobody, yeah, nobody's like, yeah, we don't care. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's true, though. The world's a hard place. The world's a hard place. I don't know what to say. It's a tough, it's a tough one. So, uh, all right, so let's bump up to 1995, the movie Vampire in Brooklyn with Eddie Murphy. Terrible, terrible fucking movie. Uh, Angela Bass's stunt double, Sonya Davis, she was killed while performing a backwards fall off the top of a building that was 42 feet high. So, oh, splat. At least she didn't yeah. see it coming. Oh, boom! Yeah, she was backwards falling. <laughs> How come when she makes a joke about somebody get killed, you don't jump on her? Because mine's funny. Oh, oh. zing! Boom! Going out season finale with a couple of zingers. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, brother, sister. 
just arguing. It's so sweet. <laughs> All right, so uh, another terrible movie, 1997, Gone Fishing. I just want to point out that it must really suck to die for a movie that nobody likes. Huh? <laughs> It'd be different if you died making Avatar. Or well, except fucking... if you're dead, you don't fucking know. So well, we, we don't know that for made. sure, do we? We don't know that for <laughs> sure. Is that the movie Joe Pesci? Yeah, Joe Pesci and Danny Glover. Oh. So, yeah, Jesus Christ, I would be in bad. I died. I'd be in heaven. What'd you do? I died fucking making Gone Fishing with Joe Pesci and Danny Glover. <laughs> Oh, my God. Maybe I'm that's terrible. why he's in heaven. Yeah, well, maybe so. So, uh, well, actually, it was a stunt woman. A stunt woman named uh, Janet Wilder was killed uh, during a stunt when one boat crashed into another. Well, you don't know what her pronouns are. No, <laughs> that's I don't. Exactly what you know what? That's this is, exactly no, no, what no, no, no. It's 1997. They didn't have uh, pronouns, no pronouns back yet. then. There were no pronouns back then. So. There were some other people that were injured, but they didn't get killed, so there's no more point in talking about it. <clears throat> All right, now. Now we're getting closer to the modern day. So, uh, there was... A Russian film uh, that was going to be titled Messenger, and it was slated for release in 2002, but that never happened because the it only filmed for two days. On the second day, a rock slash ice slide killed the director, the lead actor, and 42 film crew. Shut Good the fuck up. Oh. Yes. Well, that was Russia, though. Yeah, Russia, yeah. That was an actor. Gun. Yeah, safety. No, they, so no, we, that could have been an act of government. <laughs> right. The message was don't, don't make this movie. She in Russia, it was they, Russia. They don't give a fuck in Russia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so that movie actually never got made, but it was a death on a film set, so I'm pointing it out. It was 43 of them. Yeah, it was Whatever that. the math is. Yeah, yeah math, math is, is hard. hard. <laughs> I, don't feel like, I don't feel like adding a couple of to 42. I don't feel like they're doing that. So uh, I'll do it after the episode. Um, so in 2012, Expendables 2, there was an intentional explosion on a rubber boat. And uh, I don't know how they couldn't figure this out, that there was the wrong explosion or too large of an explosion. I don't know exactly what happened, but the explosion killed a stuntman and critically wounded another. So I don't know if the stuntmen were in the wrong place or the explosion was too big or what, but that's what happened. Either way, somebody fucked up. Yeah, somebody fucked up, yes. Somebody got killed because somebody else fucked the up. The Expendables. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the Expendables too, expendable. for God's sakes. Yep. So, uh, in 2018, Deadpool 2, there was a stunt woman named Joy Harris, and it was her first time ever as a stunt woman. Oh, man. Yeah, can you believe that? So, she was riding a motorcycle without a helmet, and uh, she lost control of the motorcycle, went up a ramp, and then uh, when she came down, she landed on the street where she struck a uh, cement median. And then she was launched through a window at the base of a building. And she died of blunt force traumatic head injuries. Yep. Jeez, First go around. Yep. So, well, yikes. apparently she wasn't murdered. No, I guess not. Yeah, that's crazy. So here's uh, something that's quite interesting because uh, this happened in 2019. A movie called Motherless Brooklyn. All right. What's interesting about it is it stars Willem Dafoe. Bruce Willis and Alec Baldwin. Is there, oh. is there a pattern emerging? Oh, so he's yeah. he's a murderer. In yeah, is, is there well. a pattern emerging here? I don't know. So he doesn't just play a murderer; he is one. Right. So uh, this is a neo noir film, which I have never seen. In fact, I never heard of it until I started researching all this. So what happened was a uh, fire broke out on the set, and when I say set, it was a building. I mean, I've seen pictures of it; and it just like a regular building to me. So I don't know. But what happened was. Um, a fireman named Lieutenant Michael Davidson was killed fighting the fire. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, they interviewed Alec Baldwin after the incident, and he claimed that he took the match out of the box, but he didn't strike it. It just it just lit on its own. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you're going to hell. <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Hey. Spontaneously <laughs> yep, yep. Yes. Doesn't know what happened. All right, so uh, oh, the final one. We've done it, people. So 2021, the Western Rust, which is currently filming again. They're not giving up. Uh, Baldwin, of course, shot the director, Joel Souza, in the shoulder, and the cinematographer, Hyena Hutchinson, the Hyena Hutchins, uh, in the chest with the same bullet. What happened was... Uh, yeah, it was a twofer. So what happened was they loaded a real bullet in the gun because apparently when they weren't filming scenes, people were taking the guns for the Western. They would load them up with real bullets and shooting at bottles and shit while they were waiting for everything to get started to start filming again. And nobody and fucking had a clue that this was not no, a good idea. Right. 
Exactly. I mean, I know. common sense. Not I even know. talking about it being acting, upset, anything. Common sense tells you you don't do that. I know. So uh, what happened was, of course, they were doing some target practice, left the fucking bullet in the gun. I don't know if, the, if there was multiple bullets in the gun or just one, but a bullet, at least one bullet was left in the gun, and nobody checked it, basically. So there, there was like five or six people who were in charge of like making sure – that the gun didn't have a fucking real bullet in it by the time it got to Alec Baldwin, of which Alec Baldwin himself did not check either, which he should have checked as well. Because, I mean, if you're going to point a gun at somebody and pull a trigger, you should really make sure if there's no fucking bullet in it. Yeah, but he also had no reason to pull the trigger when but he, he did. did. No, he didn't the pull the trigger. The struck itself. Yeah, the, 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 oh, gun, oh, the gun, gun went off all by itself. My bad, that's the, right. The I gun forgot. went off all by itself. <laughs> so the, fuck, the really fucked up part is uh, they weren't even filming the scene. It was just a rehearsal. He was just kind of running through the motions. They were setting up the camera, checking the angles and everything, and he ran through the motion of what he was going to do. And he just pulled the trigger while he was, because he was apparently supposed to draw his gun on somebody. He was in the church. And uh, so he pulled the trigger and shot him. And, of course, this started a whole bunch of rumors about it was murder because he didn't get along with the cinematographer and he yelled at her and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But in reality, uh, Alec Baldwin's an asshole, allegedly. And uh, he yelled at people. And also, it's very common for A-list actors to yell at everybody else on the movie set who's Shoot. not them. Yeah. You know, that's just what they do. Because they're all so, assholes. Right. So, I don't I, I, I'm, I don't go with the he actually murdered her intentionally fucking theory. That's, that's, that's a, a little far-fetched. That, that is a little far-fetched. But he did pull the trigger. I don't think he's that trigger. smart. Yeah, right. He's also not that smart. Yeah. But he did pull the trigger. Because they, the FBI ran tests to see if that gun could somehow magically fire on its own without you pulling trigger. And of course, it's impossible. Oh, shocker! <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Really, you had to well, run tests. Yeah, to that? yeah. I mean, his theory, yeah, his theory, his uh, excuse was that he pulled the gun out and he did not pull the trigger, but the gun just fired all on its own. That was well. Guns can be fired without the trigger being depressed. That is a thing. Depends on the firing pin. If the firing pin is, if the if the gun is dropped from a high distance and it somehow that firing pin is lodged forward enough to hit the primer and make mm-hmm. the, uh, it can happen, but it's not going to just happen just because you have the gun in your hand. Right. It has to be some jarring. Well, first of all, I, if anyone has ever seen a Western, you know that a lot of guns that were made back then, you have to pull a hammer back. That's why they have what they call fanning in the movies, where you see them taking their palm and they're right. constantly just slapping the hammer back and sort of right. can repeatedly pull the trigger. So those guns weren't made to just fucking pull the trigger and fire. Like modern guns. Correct. So, yeah. so That's correct as well. I don't understand how people can put guns, like, in their waistbands and shit. Like, I, I would constantly be afraid I'm well, going to shoot something people, off. People don't think. But also, what I don't understand is yeah. how, how Alec Baldwin's not in jail. Well, because, because money and well, Hollywood. That is why, yeah, because he's famous. I know. Because if I had shot someone in the chest and killed him and said, oh, it was an accident. I just pulled the gun out and pulled the trigger. I didn't realize there was a bullet in it. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong on a law enforcement officer. Would the law be like, well, you know, you, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. but he also paid off the family. The family made a deal. Don't worry, it was an accident. The family yeah. made a deal to get, like, royalties from the movie and stuff. So, I mean, they probably, you know, helped to pressure the police to not pursue it and say, oh, it was just an accident and, and helped his case, to say well, the least. Well, I think so we know could, already that the fact that it was an accident doesn't change things. By, based yeah. on the female police officer who pulled her gun right. instead of pulling her taser and shot a kid right. instead of tasing him, went to jail. Right. So, an accident doesn't change the fact that you still killed somebody. Right. I mean, that actually happened right at the same time that Alec Baldwin shot this woman. So That's right. Uh, yeah. Then she, you can tell from the footage that that woman accidentally shot that guy. She did not. Oh, yeah. She, so if she went to jail, Alec Baldwin should be in jail. Yep. Getting thanked in the shower. Yeah. Yep. So yep, whatever. Yep, yep. But that's not how I want to go back to this question about putting a handgun in your waistband. Though. You said... That if you put a handgun in your waistband, you would have a fear of something getting shot off? What do you have in there that you have to shoot <laughs> No, off? I'm talking about getting, like, <laughs> shoot myself in the I leg, see. or how they put it in the back of their, like, you know, they're going into the store, so they put it in the back of their shoot waistband, and well, I'm thinking... One way, one way to do that safely is to not have a bullet in the barrel. No, no, I don't think you... Uh, but see, that's, that's how scared I am of, like, I know how to fire a gun, I know how to, you know, load it, unload it, all that kind of stuff, 
but I am so respectful of guns. I'm not even going to do that. Even if I know there's not a bullet in the chamber, yeah. there's no magazine in it, whatever. I, I'm not putting that shit in my waistband. Right. All right. Cool. So I just, it, it amazes me that people do stupid shit like that. I have. <laughs> Thousands of times. <laughs> well, you're crazy. I'm just, I, I know how to operate a weapon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you just said sometimes a gun can fire without pulling the trigger. Yeah. Did you hear what the exceptions to that were? Yeah, there there are ways to be safe and do it. And I'm then, just saying, I I just think it's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, it's not a good look. Okay. It's not a good look. Mm -hmm. It's not a good look. Mm -hmm. No, fashion. I understand. They actually make a thing called thunder draws. What? <laughs> it's is, an actual is that how pair. they pronounce it? Thunder draws. That's how I Chris say it. does it too. Chris thunder does draws. it too. I have never said the word thunder draws until <laughs> just a second. You say so draws. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> You say draws all the time. Yeah. It's an actual pair of underwear that's a holster for your handgun. Thunder, thunderwear. Well, that's a holster. Your waistband is not a holster. But it's still right up close to your vitals. Your oh, my God. Berries. Oh, my God. But I mean, I'm not even talking about the pride. I mean, even just your, your legs, like anything. You're yep. close to the spine right there. Well, so, you, so you're so. saying you should not carry it at all. I don't think you should tuck it into a <laughs> fucking waistband. Well, well, you know, if it's on your side in a holster, it's pointed at your leg. It still can shoot yeah, you in the foot. Yeah, in a holster. Right. Yeah. right. It's in a holster. If it's in a cross made. draw, it's still pointed at your ass cheek. I mean, so, just, no matter where you have it on you, it's going to be pointed at some part of your In body. a holster. So what you're saying not is... Not loose in your fucking waistband. What you're well, saying no, is women should not be able to carry a gun. Is that what you're saying? What? Women should not be able to carry guns. Is that uh, what you're saying? Oh, here you go. Here you go. Oh, well, we got to be controversial. That's how we're going to get listeners. <laughs> Women should not be allowed to carry handguns. I said it on this podcast. I don't mean it, though. Is that what you're saying, I'm asking? <sighs> no, that's not what Okay, I'm good. Saying. So, all right, let's wrap this up. And uh, He's about to get murdered after this. And um, I'm going to go ahead and recommend my final movie of the year. Woohoo! Boy, yep. that's reason to celebrate. So, even Who got though, the champagne? <laughs> Even though it's New Year's Eve, it's still December, so I'm gonna. I was like, what can I movie can I recommend that will still have kind of a Christmas theme? So I decided to recommend a movie with a bunch of midgets in it. Oh and, my God! Uh, well, I think the, the politically correct. Can you say midgets? No, I think you have to say uh, people most likely to play elves. <laughs> I think that's the. I think not that, anymore. I think that's the term. Oh, no, that's that they, dwarfs. I'm that's, sorry. That's no. the term they prefer. Elves, yeah, that's not true elves. because Oompa Loompas now are full size yeah, people. Well, that's why I said. That's why I said elves. most likely. I said most likely people. <laughs> Play the tape back. All right. I covered oh my, my ass. Twiggy so, berries. What? All right. So the movie came out in 1981. The movie is Time Bandits. I love it. Oh my God! I made my kids watch that. They didn't really like it. Oh, whoa, whoa. you like a movie that I'm recommending? Yes. Shut up. I love it too. Yeah. How is it a Christmas movie then? It's not. It has midgets in it. The midgets play elves. Oh, oh, it's oh, creepy. Oh, that's far it's right. late. It's a oh, creepy right. movie, actually. Right. Yeah. I like how we and, made that. And we watched that what a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then realized they had like giant Legos in it. Oh my God! It was a hilarious joke. It's that was great. such a funny joke. The giant Legos. That is a funny joke. Yeah, it's a great. It's yeah. a great movie. It really is good. So the movie is directed by Terry Gilliam, who was a member of Monty Python. So like, you know, Life of Brian, Quest for the Holy Grail, uh, the movie 12 Monkeys with Bruce Willis. Those are movies directed by the yeah. same man, Terry yeah, Gilliam. Yeah, yeah. So you know what kind of style he has. He has a very specific, grimy, wide lens uh, thing that he does with a lot of the movies. I love it. I love the style of, of uh, directing. And I love the movie. It's very funny. It's very unusual. It's a strange movie. The plot of the movie is that uh, there's this little... A uh, boy, this English boy, who uh, one night uh, out of his um, closet, a uh, his wardrobe, a, a knight riding a horse just jumps out and then jumps over his bed and disappears. And so the next night he's like, "What the hell?" So he uh, he's all prepared. He's got a flashlight. He's gonna prove. He's got a camera. He's gonna prove that this is happening in his room. And what happens is a bunch of midgets come out of his closet, and uh, they have a map that has that has a bunch of time portals. Uh, all over the earth, and uh, they can use them. They they used to work for God, and they've they've stolen the map from God, and they're using the time portals to go to different points in history to steal valuables, so they can just have this giant hoard of uh, gold and stuff. And God is chasing them down, and they're using the um, portals to to evade him. Meanwhile, they don't say he's the devil; they say he's evil. They never say devil; they say he's evil. There's this guy who's 
trying to catch him so he can steal the map and use the map for evil purposes. And then the little boy gets pulled along with him and he's wrapped up in all the adventures. And he, since it's uh, directed by Terry Gillum, you got all the guys from Mighty Python doing little cameos in the movie and stuff. And you have like Kenny Baker, of course, famous for playing R2-D2. He's in it. Basically all the all the midgets in Hollywood, I guess, uh, main, the main midgets in Hollywood are cast to do this. Ken, uh, David Rappaport, who everybody knows, he's been in every damn thing. So he, he was the main guy leading a little group of people. So, so if you were a midget at the time looking for work, you were really excited, really excited about, about this movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great movie, actually. It really and is and a it's great a movie. comedy? Yes. Oh. You don't think it's a comedy? I always thought it was just kind of creepy. Well, then, once again, we've discussed already, you don't have a sense of humor. I mean, yeah, the whole movie, it's not its not like watching a it Will Ferrell movie, but yeah, it does it have comedic. Com- it's a different type of comedy. Yeah, it's a dark comedy. It's a dark comedy. Yeah, dorky. Yeah. But I, but... It I is like funny, it. though. It, it, it does have some very funny moments. Yeah. yeah. Very funny sure. moments. So, but, uh, so that's it. Uh, Time Bandits, 1981. Highly, highly recommend it. Very enjoyable. And very if you movie. buy a certain version, it gives you the map. Oh, and, yeah, if you uh, buy the Criterion Collection Blu-ray, you actually get the map as a special feature. You can unfold it. Comes in the box. Uh, wow. The map Nobody that they use. buys that shit no uh, more. Yes, they do. Yeah, we don't yes, count do. you. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. You no, know, there's a lot of people. A lot of people still buy. A lot of people are waking up to the fact that physical media is the way to go because then they can't take it from you after you pay for it. So oh, that's a whole other ball of wax. Physical media, the yeah. way to go. Physical media takes up room. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It does. It does take up room, but also it's yours forever. They can't take it from you until you lose it. Yeah, until you lose it. Or your husband makes you throw it away because it's taking up room. <laughs> Oh, Man, this is the longest episode we've ever had. Yeah. Season finale. Let's season go ahead and wrap finale. it up. People are like, Jesus, all right, we got a season finale. Yeah. So we are going to take a short hiatus. We're going to come back uh, January 21st. Is that correct? Season two. Season two. Yeah. Yep. We're going to kick things up a notch on season two. So Somehow. Hopefully. We might have to get some cameras and get naked and stuff. We're, we're going to do uh, something. No. We <laughs> <gonna, laughs> want people to tune in. Oh, not tune yeah, out. but I might. <laughs> but see, they might throw... Dollar bills at me just to get me to put clothes on. <laughs> you and Chris can do it. They're, 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 they're throwing it what at the fucking radio? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I said so a camera. You did. You missed the part. Okay. Yeah, so they're throwing thinking. it at the camera. You Either way, thinking. you ain't getting the money because it ain't going through. Uh, we have a button. <laughs> right. Says, yeah. Throw your donations. Right yep. Here. Donations. Yeah. Donations. <laughs> right so you uh, brought us in. You gonna sign us out or does it matter? Uh no. Uh, I didn't. She's <laughs> gonna get us sued. Bandit. Copyrighted. Oh, uh, let me think. I, I never thought about. Uh, uh, we also will take suggestions on ways that I can open and or close the show if you like the whole game show thing. So keep that in mind, people. Uh, yeah. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Right. We want to hear that. Do you want to see Reagan open the show as a mime? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have that on the next poll. Would you like to hear Chris get his ass beat by Bodie? <laughs> I don't think you would do that, though. Uh, I think they're two like this. I know, but he's married to me. Well, I can he tell likes the, what I, I got. Can, I, can, I can tell the story about uh, what the hell. Uh, you know what? Season two, I'll tell the story about the time that Bodie showed me how effective a uh, bulletproof vest is. That was a funny story. So I'll uh, keep you in suspense about that. And uh, we will see you in a couple of months. See you yeah, in 2021. Yeah. 21 days. 21 days. It's been a fun season. Thank you all. Yep. Big dog out. Bye. Later. See ya.